Hello and welcome to another episode of Diving into Sitecore Analytics. Today we are going to look at client event tracking. So far we've been able to trigger events and goals by assigning them to pages. So whenever a user clicked onto a page, uh, a goal was triggered. That's fine for many cases, but uh, what happens with all these events and all that information that we can track solely in the client? For instance, toggling accordions, uh, sliding through sliders, entering search terms, all this kind of information. So here's what we're going to do. Client tracking is a feature that is not available out of the box unless you're using uh, Sitecore JSS. But don't worry, there's a number of marketplace modules around. I happen to have written one myself and published it to GitHub. Let's install this tool first. Let's go to GitHub and have a look at this tool. Uh, the usage is quite simple. Once we have it installed, we have this function XDB tracker available and we can call these trigger events and trigger outcome commands. Okay, let's install this. Installation is very easy. I'm going to download the release, open the folder. And all I need to do is copy these files into my web root. Go. Place. You would most likely have to integrate these files into your build and deploy. Uh, just for local installs, copying them to uh, the web root is going to be enough. Now, next step we have to do is we have to include a tracking script, a JavaScript file. Let's go and copy this. I need to include this in my main layout so that it's available on every page. And habitat to main layout is available under website layouts. And let's just scroll down to the footer. And I'm just going to include it somewhere here in my footer. You can see the script is included. The script is tiny, it's something around three, three or 400 bytes. It's absolutely tiny. Okay, done. Now let's start up Psycore again. Oh, there we go, that was fast. I cheated there a little, I admit. Uh, so, um, now what we're gonna do is start tracking some client-side events. So the first thing I would like to do is go to my example page and I have this image with a light box. And what I want to do is I want to trigger a goal once a user has actually viewed the large image of an animal. So first thing we need to do is go to marketing control panel Go to goals and set up a new one. Let's call this one viewed animal image. And let's say this is worth two engagement points. Never forget, if you create goals, you always have to deploy them first. That's the number one source of errors. Okay, we're ready. That is basically all we need to do. Let's go back to this page. Uh, if you looked very closely before, you might have seen inside layouts, I have this example.js and with this, we're going to work with this file. Uh, let's open it up. Um, 
this just gives me the possibility to uh, write JavaScript directly in this website. Okay, so what we're gonna do is try to uh, get that click event. So let's go and inspect the page. And I can see here, we have this class mosaic backdrop and a, a tag. So that's ideal for me for getting the click event. Okay, let's try to do something like this. Uh, remember our class was mosaic backdrop and an a tag behind it. And let's subscribe to this click event. Let's just see in console if something happened. And I'm going to try to get the href attribute. Okay, let's go and test this out. Refresh my page, click on the zebra, and I can see it has worked. Click event has been intercepted and the attribute is correct. So let's have a look at the documentation. Here it says usage, xdb tracker trigger event, and we're going to use this one uh, where you can trigger event and you can send data to the event back to my window. This is globally available. So now what we need to do is set the correct ID right here. We can go to our goal and just copy this item ID. And as data I want to send my search term, take away the console log, and let's test this. Refresh, and let's have a look at the network tab. So let's open up this thing. What you can see, you can see a check ASHX has been called, and the data has been sent, my href attribute plus the ID. What I can now do is open this uh, cool sidebar here, refresh it, and I can see, yes, goal was triggered, viewed animal image. Perfect. So this works, it's as easy, easy as that. You just attach two DOM elements and trigger events when something happens. It's really just as easy as that. Uh, let's do a bit uh, a more complex example. Uh, Habitat has this nice search feature. And Sycor actually already has a nice uh, search event, a page event. And attached to that, it already has default reports. So what we need to do, this is not a goal, it's a page event. So remember, page events are not stored in the marketing control panel, but they are in the system node. So let's go to system, settings, analytics, page events, and down here is my search event. I reckon it's uh, also a sign of uh, engagement when a user searches the page, so let's give him one point. Next thing we need to know have is this ID. So let's get go ba back to our JavaScript and try to type something. So this search input box has the ID search input box. So I can intercept it here easily. Let's see what happens. Okay, refresh, go to the console. This is working on key up. So notice on every key up, uh, it is triggering these events. Uh, I don't really want to have all of these partial search terms in my report. That's why I'm going to use a mechanism called debouncing. So let's set this up. Let's use this debounce function 
and I'm going to call it Let's see if something happens. So far we're just locking to the console. So what you can see, there's a delay before locking this search term. And this is a very beneficial effect in situations like that where you have many events uh, it will actually only trigger when after some time has passed i can i think i can actually increase this value a bit more let's do half a second okay that's just fine yes this way i have just far better quality of uh, data that is fed into these reports. Good. So next thing we have to do is trigger the actual event. And that's an easy one. I actually even have an example here in this documentation. I can basically just go and copy it. Go to my JavaScript. And instead of logging to console, let's track. Now let's check if this ID is correct. I'm just going to copy it just to be completely sure. And we need to set our search term right here. Perfect. Now test this out. Let's look at our network tab and have a look. Okay, something has been tracked. So it sent this hello payload. It sent this track request. And another one. Perfect. So I think it's working. So to be completely sure, uh, let's have a look at our page events. Refresh. And I can see, yes, I have entered three search terms. Let's end this visit. Uh, but before that, I want to identify my user. Uh, remember, if you've seen the last episode, I've been using a tool called XConnect Helper. It's also available on uh, GitHub installation is also very easy. I'm terribly sorry for the user interface. I have to really clean this up at one stage. Um, what we can do here is identify our contact just for testing. Let's, uh, let's just take some fake unique ID and identify it. So now my contact has an identifier. I can see right here. And some contact data. Okay, just some fake name. Okay, now let's flush the session. And get back to our dashboard. Now let's have a look at these reports. Now under behavior, we have a built-in report called internal search. And here we can see, wow, our client tracked events are actually uh, listed here inside this report with this valuable uh, report where you can see conversion rate per search term and how often these terms have been called. Uh, personally, I usually always set the sorting to be uh, by count descending. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, have a look at the first episode. Uh, I briefly show how that is done there in core database. Now let's have a look at experience profile because I have identified my user, good old kangaroo hunter here. 
And now that this is loaded, we can see page events, search, triggered gold viewed animal image, all client side events that I've called. Uh, let's go into some detail. Uh, this internal search event has been built in here. So I can actually have a look at what keywords this user has entered. I can go through the visits and actually see this person has viewed all these pages and has entered these search terms. I have triggered a goal, viewed animal image. So this is very, very interesting. Uh, all this data we wouldn't have if we wouldn't have client side event tracking. So I really uh, urge everyone to set it up. It's a matter of maybe a few hours or even less to get it done. Uh, well, the hard part is actually to set up all these events in JavaScript, of course, that takes some time, but it's actually not very hard as you just saw in this episode. So to wrap it up, client side event tracking, uh, we need a tracker component. Uh, JSS has one built in, uh, but otherwise you need to install one. There's a number of marketplace modules that already do this. I have published this XDB tracker uh, module. So if you want to check it out, feel free. Uh, please send me feedback if anything doesn't work as expected. Okay. Thank you and see you next time.